Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be learning about gametogenesis, which is the process through which um, humans or other animals uh, can produce their gametes. But this video's focus is purely on the human reproductive system, so we're going to be looking at how sperms and eggs form. Now over here, I have a very simplified drawing of an embryo. Uh, this embryo is a very happy embryo, not yet born, but at this very point, a lot of things are starting to happen. A lot of things are dividing. We'll focus our attention on a group of cells, uh, the green ones over here, and they are called primordial germ cells. Um, and these cells are essentially the precursors to the spermatogonia and the oogonia that will eventually go through spermatogenesis and oogenesis. Just to take note, we have not yet started gametogenesis, but these are the precursor cells that will eventually give us the cells where, um, that will participate in gametogenesis. So let's zoom out and focus on the male first because this process is a little bit easier. Let's look at the male. Uh, we will, again, like I said, we're going to start our story with the primordial germ cells. Uh, they exist in the embryo. And one of the first things that will happen to the primordial germ cells is that they will undergo mitosis. They will undergo mitosis to form tons and tons and tons of cells that you will come to know as spermatogonia. Um, spermatogonia for the plural, spermatogonium for singular. Not only will it undergo mitosis to form tons of spermatogonia, it also undergo mitosis to form more of itself, more primordial germ cells. Um, and this is where we can really start our story of spermatogenesis. You see all the cells I've drawn in blue, and these are the cells that participate in spermatogenesis. Now as we go through the various stages of spermatogenesis and oogenesis later on, one of the key things you have to pay attention to is whether number one, if it's mitosis or meiosis taking place, number two, the ploidy level of the eventual cell which means to say is it going to be haploid or is it going to be diploid and this is very important um, we are essentially drawing a connection to the previous chapter on cell division so just pay attention to these two things as we move along okay let's begin spermatogenesis so from the spermatogonia um, spermatogonia will then undergo mitosis Again, if we say it undergoes mitosis, um, then you have to think, are we going to produce diploid cells or are we going to produce haploid cells? Maybe I should just add in that the primordial germ cells at the very beginning, they are diploid in nature. That means to say, when the primordial germ cells undergo mitosis, they will have formed diploid spermatogonia. When the spermatogonia undergoes mitosis, they will have formed deployed cells and we call these cells primary spermatocytes um, from the primary primary spermatocytes onwards you see these light blue cells um, they will be going through meiosis and so again pay attention if it's going through meiosis what will be the ploidy level of the cells after um, let's look at one primary spermatocyte. Right, the primary spermatocyte will undergo meiosis. Um, this is the first meiosis, so meiosis 1. Then what will be the ploidy level of the resultant cells? The ploidy level will be a uh, haploid. We call these cells secondary spermatocytes. And from these two secondary spermatocytes, they will undergo meiosis again. This is meiosis 2. And as a result, you will be getting four haploid cells that we call spermatids. 
Now these spermatids are not yet fully mature. Um, they will still have to go through differentiation to eventually form your sperm cells. Or sometimes you call it spermatozoa. And as you can see, the sperm cells are quite different from the spermatids. It's gone, it has undergone differentiation to form um, many internal structures that we'll come to know. Um, it's very important for the fertilization process later on. Maybe we can zoom in and look at one of the sperm cells while we're at it and talk a little bit about the structure. Um, let's look at the a single sperm cell. A sperm cell consists of the head, and then there's the middle portion. And then we also have the tail. Um, some key structures you have to take note of when we look at the sperm cell is the, um, the internal structures. I'm sorry, uh, this is the middle piece, not just middle. Um, we see at the very tip of the sperm, uh, there's an, an internal structure. We call this structure an acrosome. Uh, this acrosome is essentially a modified lysosome. It contains tons of hydrolytic enzymes that will come in very useful later on to digest the zona pellucida of the egg. Here we have a nucleus, and this nucleus contains a haploid number of chromosomes. And in the middle piece, we find tons of mitochondria. Mito oops, chondria. And this is very essential to carry out lots of cellular respiration to supply and synthesize ATP, which will be very useful for the sperm cell when it wants to um, flap its tail as it moves up the female reproductive system to find the egg. So that was a little bit about the structure of the sperm. Um, now let's go back to the entire process of spermatogenesis. Now, where does spermatogenesis actually take place? Well, now let's look at the structure of the male reproductive system. Over here, I've drawn a very rough um, sketch of the male reproductive system. Um, where does spermatogenesis take place? To understand where it takes place, let's just look at some of the structures at the testes. Uh, this is a single testicle. Um, some of the structures you should be familiar with. This is the vas deferens. Vas deferens. On top of that, if we go further back, we have the epididymis. And if we go further up, you'll find individual tubules. We call them seminiferous tubules. And if I were to take one of these seminiferous tubules and to um, uncoil them, and then after that slice them, and you can see cross section of the seminiferous tubule, you find tons of cells. You see these big cells? We call these big cells Sertoli cells. Uh, these Sertoli cells essentially supply nutrients to the spermatogonia that will eventually go through mitosis and meiosis. And so where does spermatogenesis take place? I'm going to show you. Uh, sp spermatogenesis takes place between uh, Sertoli cells. So let me just quickly highlight all the cells that were involved in spermatogenesis. And I'm going to show you where this all takes place. Spermatogenesis takes place, like I said, between the Sertoli cells. And as it, the spermatogonia undergoes mitosis and meiosis, the Sertoli cells will uh, su supply with nutrients to be able to undergo the process. And as you can see, as the sperm's uh, spermatogonia undergoes mitosis and meiosis, the resultant spermatozoa will end up um, at the lumen. And this is the lumen, okay, sorry. This is the lumen. This area is the lumen of the seminiferous tubule. All the mature spermatozoa will end up at the lumen of the seminiferous tubule, and they will all collect there. 
they will then pass through the seminiferous tubule eventually going out towards the epididymis and then out by the vas deferens they'll go past all the relevant glands that will nourish the sperms I'm just showing you the pathway out and then we will exit the male reproductive system via the urethra uh, during ejaculation that's where the sperms will go now so that was a very quick summary of spermatogenesis and the question is when does spermatogenesis begin uh, if we look at spermatogenesis well in males spermatogenesis actually begins at puberty so that means to say um, the green cell over here the primary germ cell all these primary germ cells were present in the embryo a male embryo they would have undergone mitosis to form tons of spermatogonia uh, and this all happens before birth okay this all happens before birth I'm going to put it as BB before birth and then the male frolics around enjoys life for a good 12 years perhaps um, and then one day um, puberty hits in hits him hard in the face um, puberty begins and at the onset of puberty spermatogenesis also begins the spermatogonia want to go mitosis to form tons of primary spermatocytes and what's good about this process is that uh, the spermatogonia can also regenerate itself on top of producing more prim primary spermatocytes and as a result you find in males they can produce um, we could say an infinite amount of sperms uh, throughout his lifetime beginning from puberty and so that was a very quick summary of spermatogenesis um, in the next video we're going to be talking about oogenesis and i think by then we can do a little bit of comparison also